Hello! In true Canadian fashion, I'll start by apologizing because I know there's a lot of inconsistencies in this video. You'll see in the next clip, I had included material to make the custom nameplate for the bowls. I have decided not to make them because I don't have enough time. Hopefully this video isn't more than 10 minutes. Uh, to give you an idea, I started these bowls at the beginning of October and right now we're the beginning of December. So as you can imagine, a lot of procrastination was involved. If you have any questions, just take a few seconds and ask in the comments below. I'm making six sets of bowls and here's the material I'm going to use. I have two or three two by six, two project boards that are essentially laminated strips of wood. They're 12 inches wide by 72 inches long. It's not completely necessary but I'm going to plane the 2x6 to make them smoother. It's gonna save a lot of work in terms of sanding and finishing. Don't forget to remove your stickers. Sometimes there's staples. I get three pieces of leg and frame in one width of the 2x6. I'll start by cutting out my middle stretchers, which are 15 inches and a quarter. I set up my miter station so I can use a stop block. The next pieces I'm going to cut are going to be the legs. Uh, these tables are going to be around 12 inches tall and my legs need to be 11 inches and 3 eighths. I need 12 crossbars to go between the legs. Those are five and a half inches long. So I'll go ahead and cut four pieces out of this leftover. I was able to get all my leg pieces in two 8 feet 2 by 6s These are the leftovers and as I mentioned before I do have a few spare pieces here. The tops are 20 inches wide so I'll go ahead and cut them to size. To process the legs, I'll start by cutting off one side to make sure all my pieces are square. Now that my edge is square, I'm going to use the thickness of the board to determine the width. I'm just going to smush it against the blade. Now I can cut all my pieces. All my leg pieces are cut. I also have spare pieces here, which I'm going to use to replace pieces like these that have bigger knots. The tops need to be 10 and 3 eighths wide. Some of the edges are damaged from the store and the strapping. So I'm just going to cut a thin slice on one side of all of them and then I'll cut them to the correct width. Now that the boards are cut, I'm going to mark the center of my holes. They need to be five and a quarter away from each edge and that's based on the size of the bowls you're using. Like this. Half of the width is 5 and 3 sixteenth. On my plunge router I have this plexiglass base and this marked hole here gives me the exact inner diameter 
for my holes so the bowls fit properly. After I just screw in my guide screw. And then I'll turn on the router and progressively cut my circle going around. And I'm not going to film it because it makes so much dust it's going to ruin the camera. First hole is cut. Let's do a test fit. Make sure everything fits properly. No movement at all. That's what we're looking for. All the tops are cut. I'm going to use a 45 degree router bit with a bearing. If it focuses. There. And I'm going to cut a really small chamfer around these just to give it a nicer finish. And I'll do the same thing around all the top edges. Here's the final look. For sanding the tops, I'm just going to use my palm sander. I like to put a, an old towel below so it doesn't scratch the surfaces, especially when I turn it over. I'm not going to show you the sanding because that's pretty boring. For the legs, I'm going to try something new. Instead of sanding them individually, I'm going to line them all up and push them against my bench dogs and try to batch sand them, then flip them over like so and keep sanding until all the sides are sanded. That's a very good way to save a lot of time. Highly recommended. Hard to believe it took an hour and a half to clean up everything and get these sanded. That makes a nice score mark. And then I go forward with it. I'm going to repeat this on all my smaller cross parts. And then the same thing for the legs. The hole is going to go directly in the middle. All my larger holes are drilled. And now I'm just going through the process of drilling the through holes. It's another day and I've been working on assembling the legs. I made myself a little jig. I'll show you how it works. Start with one of my leg pieces. And I simply align it on the base of one of the legs. Then I can clamp it into place. Add a little bit of glue on the middle piece. And now it's at the perfect height. I just slide it here. For the middle cross members, I'm just going to hold them manually. Once everything is assembled, I'll plug the holes with a dowel 
Uh, keep in mind this is not structural at all, it's just for decorative purposes. What I like to do is put a little bit of glue inside the hole and it doesn't need to be a whole lot, maybe just a drop or two to make sure the base of the dowel is well glued. After you just push your dowel in all the way to the bottom and I tried to put just the right amount of glue so that there's no squeeze out. After I take the ruler out of here and I found this to be the perfect thickness to, uh, to use it as a spacer. After all my plugs are in, I'll take a few minutes and sand the ends so they look nice and clean. Uh, I just finished putting all the plugs in the holes and I'm ready to start painting. I'm not gonna bore you with the whole painting process. For the legs, I put small screws on the ends, that way I can turn it around when it's drying and paint doesn't get everywhere. And the same thing for the covers, I'll put screws where the legs will land, that way once I stain them, I can leave them like this to dry. For the bases, I'm going to do two or three coats of white paint, and for the top, I'll apply two coats of stain with a rag. I'll make sure it's well dried before each coat, just to make sure it's evenly saturated. And after everything's dry, I'll put two coats of clear water-based polyurethane. Before I assemble it, I made a test to make sure that my brad nail gun was set properly for the material. I removed the screws. At the bottom here we have an imperfection, so we'll make sure this is hidden on the bottom side of the dishes. And the screw holes will get hidden by the legs. Once I'm satisfied with the position, I'll hold them tightly together. Flip it around. And then I can drive a nail in each leg. I see there's a little bit of warp in my board, but that should be taken care of with the nails. And I'm not adding glue because both surfaces are painted and it'd be a waste of time. To hide the brad nails, I take a little Sharpie marker and I just paint the top. And you have to keep in mind, this isn't fine furniture. There's not going to be a lot of weight in here, just a bit of water and food. So it's more than enough. For the finishing touch, I add the felt pads on the bottom. And these are fairly thick. And they do have some cushioning. So if you have a slight difference in the height of your legs, uh, even if it's caused by warping, this should take care of it. And then these hide the holes that we created with the screws during painting. Thanks for watching and have a nice day! Moods in. I just noticed I ended up putting the little crack at the top.